I chose to do the Harlem Renaissance um, in part because I wanted to see um, how jazz really formed. But I also did it because we had studied it in 10th grade and we really did a shallow, um, just, we, we barely analyzed it. We just, at least my group, just put a bunch of pictures and poems on a PowerPoint called it good and we got 100%. So we never, we never really analyzed, you know, what the different art, art forms were doing to each other and to society as a whole, and that's what I wanted to look at. So I looked at a poem, and these are, the three poems I chose are actually from our PowerPoint that we did in 10th grade, but we never analyzed them. So what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat, or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load, or does it explode? So what Langston Hughes is saying here is that he's basically challenging the race to have innovative ideas and to push forward and have dreams and just seek more than what you have right now. Because most of Harlem, at this point in time, was just content with drinking and partying all night. So he's really challenging them to step out of that lifestyle and don't not have dreams. All right, this is a, a song that I heard in September, and um, I don't know, I'm just listening to the lyrics. And it's really easy. In a land of Ubadi, she smiled and said, Ubadilia, meaning you appeal to me. I said, Ubadilia, love and do with pride. Ubadilia, love and do, let's take a ride. In the land of Ubadi, Ubadi, she drove me straight to her castle. In a land of Ubadi, Bluey Don and Dewey Blee. Bluey Don, without a doubt, was twice my size. Dewey Blee, the other sister, had three eyes. She all had eyes for me. All right, so I don't, we don't need to listen to the whole song, but um, I basically saw that it was written by someone who was from Harlem, and she grew up and basically had a rough time with society. And she was trying to demonstrate that um, most relationships at that time were really frivolous, and you can kind of tell that by the silly nature of the song, with all the, I mean, ubati, ubadilia, silliness. <laughs> so she's saying that, you know, we can't just have these, oh, you appeal to me, let's get married. I think, I don't know, I don't know how far did we get? They end up getting engaged, and I mean, it was no more than I appeal to you, you appeal to me. So she's saying relationships really need to be more in depth than that. And <laughs> all right, one of the books I read was Home to Harlem by uh, Bob McKay, and he does a few things to call, basically call out society on, or at least the black society on their flaws. One is um, he shows how uh, Christians, Christians in their society are um, not so moral and perfect as they make it seem. And he does this by using uh, Ray, a character who openly opposes Christianity. and. Um, really tries to, you know, show people that their lifestyles are not representative of their religion. And, you know, it's not all about religion, but that's just what Claude McKay used. And he's still calling on the people to know, um, you know, you're living this horrible lifestyle and you're not representing your race and your culture effectively and you need to do something about it. And another thing I noticed is looking from the jazz aspect is that they didn't talk about jazz a lot, but they talked about 
blues a lot, and I'll get more to that later, but it's blues is really like a symbol of immorality and sex and violence, but it's an escape from all that at the same time. I mean, you sing about your troubles, but it takes you to that place where you can kind of be immoral. So. Uh, the other book I read was Not Without Laughter by Langston Hughes, and he uh, wrote about a boy in Kansas who um, grew up uh, really in a household that promoted him to have good ideas, kind of like the poem that I read, and seek uh, something better in life. So he, um, the book uh, praises W.E. W.E.B. Du Bois for um, his thoughts as a scholar trying to get people to um, really move forward. Whereas Booker T. Washington um, is criticized in the book because he wanted to, you know, oh, we're okay, our day will come. So it really um, pushes black people. And here's a quote from the book. Um, this is uh, the main character, Sandy, his aunt, is telling him, uh, that's what Negroes needed to do. Get smart, study books, go to Europe. Um, it's pretty much what the book is about, because it shows that if you don't have a good education, and you don't have um, the tools necessary to succeed in life, you're going to end up just like um, Sandy's, uh, his grandma and his mom, and his other aunt, I think it was, um, who all just end up working as maids, and his um, his grandma ended up dying because she worked herself too hard. So this is his other aunt who's telling him that you need to do something with your life. And also in the book she mentions that you can succeed in a white man's society if you have the education for it. So the idea that you can succeed at a white man's level if you have the education. It's kind of important in the book as well. And uh, once again, blues are in there. Not so much jazz, but it's the same meaning as in Home in Harlem. And I think, okay, no, I have two poems before I get to the next video. Right. If We Must Die by Claude McKay. I'm not going to read it all, but if you want to glance at it real quick, it's basically the same as the first poem, but Um, it can basically be summed up in the last two lines of it. Like men will face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. You don't want to give in to uh, what the society thinks of you, what white society tells you. You want to always, I mean, you have a distinct disadvantage because of your race, but that shouldn't hold you back. You should fight back. Alright, in this poem, Yet Do I Marvel by County Collins can also be explained in the last two lines. Yet do I marvel at this curious thing to make a poet black and bid him sing. So, he's saying that if, you know, I can be a black poet, then there are other things that you should be able to achieve as well. Alright, so the blues in general. Both novels talk about it, and I kind of already explained it, but, you know, I, I wanted to look at how these different art forms, the novels and the poems and the music, all influence each other, and, you know, um, the poems are calling on society pro to progress, whereas the blues is really keeping the culture back, because, um, not only are they singing about the troubles of the day, but they're singing and playing about slavery and oppression. So, I read a book last year called Moving to Higher Ground by Wynton Marsalis. Uh, he says that the early jazz was referenced to both the troubles of the day and slavery. Um, this is a, an example I found of really good blues playing. 
Um, I just want you to listen to the emotion that they play with. That's my thing. 